Your Excellency, Oliver Agnew Grimsholm, President of Iceland, the Honorable US Ambassador Robert C. Barber, distinguished guests and dear speakers. Welcome to Start of Iceland, and my name is Jón Josef Schneibinsholm, but I'll be your host today, but of course you, I don't think that you can pronounce my surname, so you'll just call me Jónsi. That'll be quite easy. Um, first things first, it's 8.30, it's a Monday morning, I have a guitar, why not a song? Not just any song. Let's see. I tumble out of bed and I stumble in the kitchen. I pour myself a drink of ambition. Yawn and stretch and try to breathe the light. I jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping. Out of the streets, those cars are jumping. There's folk like me that work from nine to five. Working nine to five, what a way to make a living, barely getting by. Let's just take in and no giving, they just use your mind, and they barely give you credit. And I know it drives you crazy if you like it. Working nine to five for service and devotion, you better think that I, I should deserve a good promotion, but it's a boss man's game. But the boss won't seem to let me But I swear on my life That he is out to get me Now Now, that was that A small song to begin with Always cheers people up Very good But there is a reason why we were using Why I was using a song Of course I am a musician And that's my First, first profession, but I was also using uh, an Icelandic guitar made by an Icelandic entrepreneur called Gunnar Örn, so f therefore he made this guitar for this occasion. I think he made the guitar amp as well. The microphone came from Portland, from a small uh, entrepreneurial company called uh, Ear Trumpet Labs. I'm wearing an Icelandic suit from Kormogur and Skjöldur, and my shirt is made for, uh, by, a, by a girl called Guðrún. She makes really nice shirts and calls them Hygiene Muni. So I'm just surrounded by entrepreneurial powers and found this expertise. Expertise, sorry about that. Now, and therefore, I thought it would be appropriate to do something like that in the beginning of this beautiful lecture. We will have an awesome day. Awesome day, the all of us. And uh, I'd like to point out that there's a hashtag that we have, right, Balam? Uh, the start of IK, ISK and uh, the SI2016. So you can follow us on Twitter. Um, the Wi-Fi is free. You just log onto your devices and find Harpa uh, free Wi-Fi to do so. And, um, and now I'd like to, without further ado, introduce the man who made everything possible right here. We're here because of his immense efforts, and therefore I would like to ask you to put your hands together for Mr. Bala Kamal Karan. Bala, the stage is yours. Good morning. Your Excellency, the President, Oliver Ragnar Grimson, Ambassador Barber, Ambassador Gill, Ambassador Hirvonen, thank you for making it here today. Ladies and gentlemen, friends who have flown from half across the world to be in Iceland today, once again, thank you. Um, Startup Iceland would not be possible without the support and encouragement of the Icelandic community. Um, our sponsors and a bunch of grassroots volunteers who um, make me look good on stage, although I'm presuming, but, uh, but they make it happen. Um, thank you. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to invite the President of Iceland to open Startup Iceland again. Without his generosity and encouragement in 2012, I would not have made this possible. And um, 
thank you for your effort, sir. And without much ado, Mr. President. Distinguished ambassadors, uh, participants, uh, good morning to all of you. Once again, <clears throat> we have uh, come together in this uh, remarkable event which uh, manifests the uh, vitality and the dynamic forces of creativity uh, in this uh, small country, as well as uh, inviting uh, people from different parts of the world to share in the, uh, the excitement, to share in uh, the journey, and perhaps uh, enter a partnership and, uh, and create projects that uh, in a relatively short time uh, can make it uh, big in the global market. I know it's kind of a strange thought that from a small place like Iceland, uh, products and ideas can, in a short time, make it big in the, uh, in the huge, competitive, uh, strong, uh, strong global market. And some years ago, even before Startup Iceland was created, it was perhaps legitimate for people to doubt whether such an alliance between uh, startup people and uh, companies and operations here in Iceland and investors and others uh, from different countries would actually make a sense. Maybe the uh, information technology and the transformation of the <coughs> global economy <coughs> sorry, was such that uh, small countries like Iceland, uh, based on old literary culture, uh, having a traditional fishing economy for, for centuries, long into the second half of the 20th century, that somehow the dynamic forces of change in the world uh, would, uh, would pass us by. And since, as some of you know, I've been long in this office, uh, I can remember quite vividly that uh, in the first years of my presidency in the 1990s, uh, there were doubts among many whether it really made sense, whether we had the elements in Iceland that could make us players in the creative dynamic world that was emerging. Uh, I was uh, elected, for those of you who come from other countries, especially the young Americans I met uh, outside, I was elected towards the end of Bill Clinton's first term. Sounds a long time ago. I see the ambassador laughs, yes. <laughs> Some people have served in the White House since. Yes, that's true. And let's also remember, which I've been told a number of times, but I, I, I find, still find difficulty in, in believing it, that when President Clinton made his first State of the Union address about yeah, three and a half years or so uh, before, I was, uh, before I was elected. There were only about 4,000 internet sites in the United States. 4,000. That's uh, like the inhabitants in a in an Icelandic fishing town. <laughs> and of course, this whole idea of the Silicon Valley, the creative forces, uh, uh, companies that are now household names in every continent, to every country in the world, was far away in the future. I sometimes remind young people in Iceland uh, to watch again the great film uh, about the creator of, the creator of Facebook. And watch it again, not to get inspired by Mark Zuckerberg and his friends uh, who wanted to meet girls uh, in the university days, but to watch it again and think about it all the time. When did these things happen? Which year were they chasing girls? 
in the uh, East Coast universities through this new, new technology. So if we take these two crossroads in times, one when Bill Clinton and I were jointly serving in the presidencies of these two countries, and there were only 4,000 internet sites uh, to reflect on his State of the Union address. I mean, look how lucky he was. I mean, no Twitter, no reaction, no, <laughs> no immediate measurements on the television screen, how people reacted minute by minute, as we have today. And the year which this great movie was made. And in between those two points in time, there were many here in Iceland who doubted strongly, profoundly, that we could become competitive in this new world of startup companies uh, created basically out of the minds of people. Because we used to think about economy in terms of <clears throat> fishing stocks and power plants, real things. You need trawlers, and you need huge turbines <clears throat> in order to make it in the global economy. <clears throat> or, big, or big processing plants, or aluminum smelters. That was the formula of how Iceland would link to the rest of the world. Add a few aeroplanes by Iceland Air and uh, their previous airline companies. And that amounted to the three pillars of the Icelandic economy. So the notion that young people of creative thinkers could out of the forces of their mind and imagination and creativity create companies which in a relatively short time would through both their groundwork here in Iceland as well as their international contacts become competitive in this new emerging world was a very strange notion. And I remember during the first 10 or 15 years or so of my presidency, especially the first 10 years, when I tried to advocate to people that we had all of the elements that were necessary to make this creative dynamic field produce such <clears throat> results, the doubters legitimately were not only many, but thought they had a strong case. But now, of course, we are here in 2016. Basically, the debate is over. That it has been proved through multiple successes, through the Startup Iceland conferences in the last few years, and many other occurrences and, and uh, meetings and, uh, and, uh, and cooperative examples. And I could stand here long into the afternoon and give you lists of my own personal experience of visiting the headquarters uh, where a few people, two or three or four, were beginning to evolve their projects uh, and have now become not only reasonably wealthy and prosperous, but also very successful players, not just in Iceland and, uh, and elsewhere. And this was especially important when the banks collapsed. Because when the banks collapsed, uh, what many people believed would be the fourth pillar, in addition to the fishing, uh, the power plants, uh, then many people thought that was the end of our global journey, that we would return back to the cot. Uh, on the turbines, and a few months after the banks collapsed, I decided to make visits around the country, go into many companies and uh, institutions, uh, and talk to the people, and create a dialogue between me and those who were dealing with uh, the aftermath of all of this. And many of these companies were what we would call startup companies small, innovative, dynamic. And one of the fascinating experiences of those months in the end of 2008 and throughout 2009 was to feel not only the 
optimism, the dynamic force, but the power of determination of all these creators. And I remember also that when the <clears throat> Indian ambassador hosted a forum about the cooperation between India and Iceland, and Bala was one of the speakers, he made this unforgettable analysis of how fortunate he was to be almost the only international player in Iceland after the collapse of the banking system and be able to pick and choose in this rich field of new innovative and startup flowers and trees in this garden and bring those big ideas and companies into the global setting. It was a completely different vision to see in the crisis of the financial system the great opportunity for startup companies and ideas to now have the opportunity, partly because, as CCP told me when I visited them at this unforgettable lunch meeting I had with them uh, in, uh, in November, a few weeks after the banks collapsed, because they also, like Bala, were hugely optimistic. They almost applauded the collapse of the banking system because in the previous years, the banks had taken most of the innovative actors in the Icelandic economy from those startup fields into the banking system. Not only computer scientists, but mathematicians, designers, philosophers, thinkers, and others. So the challenge to get enough creative talent to bring those startup companies up to adulthood and into the global market was formidable. And at the CCP lunch, they said, now, of course, we will be able to double the subscribers of EVE Online in the next two years. Shocking statement. Great news, they said, because now we can get the people to bring this vision into, into reality. So my dear friends, as I come soon to leave office, one of the great stories of having been a part of this uh, transformation, of this dialogue, is to witness upfront how this has happened. To be privileged to meet people, young people and others in their small offices and see them grow despite the odds and despite the, uh, uh, the pessimism of the so-called official public debate in this country, grow into formidable, formidable players. And to see this nation, which traditionally, as we all know, was a nation of fishermen and farmers, use their creative culture based on literary heritage, but now also seen in many other fields of arts and science, into this new field of uh, technological, computer, software-based startup, startup companies. And recently, to, through the growth of tourism in a new way, link it to uh, the respect for the nature of Iceland, the uniqueness uh, of our landscape, and so bring the dynamic, dynamic forces of nature we host in this country with the dynamic creative forces inside the culture and the minds of the people into one single, single message. That there is a country of just over 300,000 people that new ideas keep, keep coming. And people are sufficiently self-confident to take these ideas and develop them into projects and invite others from the rest of the world to become their partners and, uh, and to make a success uh, of all of this. I know the term uh, melting plot is an overused term. I have often preferred to use the term a place or, of renaissance because the renaissance was a period in European culture which really was the beginning of what we have seen in the following, following centuries, of the evolution of culture, 
of democracy, of thinking, of seeing the world and ourselves uh, in a new way. And that's what I think Iceland can offer to the world, is to see the world in a new way and to welcome new ideas. And the track record now, whether it is in the multiple fields of startup companies that have been created in Iceland in the last 20 years or so, or the transformation from coal and oil over to, over to clean energy, or from overfishing uh, the grounds and the ocean around the country to a sustainable, profitable fishing industry on a world scale, or in the field of medic medical research and, and genetic research and other areas, or in the fields of music and literature uh, and science. It's almost mind-boggling that a place of so few people can, in so many areas, create new ideas in a dynamic way. But the message is, because I don't believe we are that special here in Iceland, that it can't be done everywhere. And if we together can use Iceland as an example and an inspiration for others, to unleash the creative forces in people in Africa and Asia and the Latin Americans and the rest of Europe, we will be able together to create a fascinating, dynamic, a better world. Because that, for me, is what this is all about, to create a better, more fascinating, dynamic world. So thank you all for being here today. <coughs> Thank all of you whom I see here in the audience who have been part of this journey for a long time. And let's continue it in a way that will benefit everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for that inspiring speech. Uh, for you newcomers, yes, we have a few seats here in the audience. You can all have a seat. Um, Next up, I'd like to introduce the, the Honorable U.S. Ambassador to Iceland, Mr. Robert Barber. So, without further ado, let's use it many times a day, without further ado. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you. President Grimson, colleagues Stuart and Valtteri, distinguished speakers, Ladies and gentlemen, go then Diane. President Grimson, thank you, if I may, for those inspiring words. Your, your wisdom and your perspective have unique value, and I hope all of you here uh, take those words to heart. And Bala, thank you for inviting me to speak today at the start of what I am sure is going to be a great conversation on how startups can be successful in Iceland and elsewhere. This is my second time at the Startup Iceland conference, and I'm even more impressed today, I have to tell you, with how effective this gathering of the best and the brightest in the startup scene, how impressive it has become. You all are here because you care. You care about being successful, and more importantly, you care about helping others to be successful. Being an entrepreneur is simple in concept, but it's never easy. It's full of challenges, unexpected problems, and expected ones. Roadblocks and over-enthusiasm. People who denigrate your vision and people who get your vision. It all starts with an ordinary person seeing the world in an extraordinary way whether in solving a problem, filling a market niche, or anticipating the next wave of technological innovation. But it also takes real dedication and commitment to transform that idea from a paper to a reality. So how do we do that? What are the keys to success? And how can we obtain them? In my career as an attorney in Boston, prior to becoming the United States Ambassador to Iceland about 16 months ago, 
I was privileged over many decades to work with founders and entrepreneurs. Some were successful and some were not. Those that did make it, though, they possessed certain critical attributes in common. From their experiences and my own in advising them, I'd like to offer to you, for your consideration, a few observations, perhaps to keep in the back of your minds throughout this conference. The first of those, find your niche. To me, this is very important. You must strive to be the best in your field. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be first, but you should excel in your approach in solving the problem or providing the service. A niche makes you special and focuses your energy toward bringing the best out of your talent. A second thought, apply your passion, but with some balance. Entrepreneurship can be learned, but it takes commitment and long-term thinking. It usually requires sacrifice in the beginning, and this affects those around you as well as yourself. Sustained hard work and motivation can take their toll, so you need to pace yourself to avoid burnout for you, but also for those who are supporting you, your friends and family and colleagues. A third point, don't forget intellectual property rights. I have to add this. As a founder, your ideas are just as valuable and likely much more valuable than your physical property. I suggest to you that you take into account protection of your intellectual property rights, as that can save you both money and aggravation later on, or really could even save your business if you find yourself in a dispute involving a suspiciously similar product or service. Early on, I would suggest you consult with an IP lawyer or advisor about patents, trade secrets, and their protection, really the whole range of IP that is relevant to your venture. And learn about what you can do, what I would say you must do, to ensure that your rights are protected, especially in international markets. A fourth point, mentorship is critical. When a founder starts his, his or her voyage down the road toward success, it is enormously helpful to seek counsel from others who've been there before. To those of you who are successful founders or entrepreneurs, look behind you and actively seek to help someone else. Share your failures as well as your successes. Teach others to avoid the pitfalls and the potholes you've encountered. Be a mentor. Indeed, consider being a sponsor. The entrepreneur you advise will surely benefit, and so will you. After all, an entrepreneurial society has at its, art, at its heart an entrepreneurial community. So it is in this context that I'd like to describe for you some of the distinguished speakers from the United States who are here today. I'm proud of my countrymen for their contributions and their accomplishments, and especially, especially for their willingness and dedication to assist in building the, entrepreneur, the entrepreneurship community here in Iceland. In order of their appearance during the conference, I mentioned first Scott Caruso, whose distinguished career has included stints at Sun Microsystems, Network Intensive, Vario, and the founding of Hotspur. Scott then went on into investing, first as an angel and then as a founding general partner at Flywheel Ventures. Scott has led investments in disruptive technologies, including social media and cloud services. Today, Scott is the CEO of Pure Color Inc., a company disrupting the wood finishing industry. Scaling a physical products business is significantly different than software, but the company building process is very much the same as is the approach for disrupting an established entrenched market. St Techstar Venture Fund is an investor in pure color. Another in the vanguard of disruptive technologies, Judd Valesky co-founded GNIP, 
which was the first startup to aggregate social data back when Facebook was just another fad. NIP was acquired by Twitter in 2014 for about $134 million. And Judd's personal experience as a founder, magnified by his experience with tech stars, is formidable. Magnus Bjornsson, a native Icelander, has spent the past nearly two decades in the United States and recently, I understand, has become a United States citizen. He's currently serving as Senior Director of Development at Oracle Corp, leading its big data discovery product. Prior to Oracle, Magnus worked at Endica, a startup that was acquired by Oracle in 2012, one of its biggest acquisitions at the time. And before that company, Mag Magnus held both management and technical leadership positions at EMC Corp and co-founded and built one of the first companies specializing in digital media advertising in Iceland. Magnus has been a successful founder on both sides of the Atlantic, giving him a unique perspective on the two markets. Ingrid Vandevelt, or IV, has done just about everything else. IV is the founder and chair of Empowering a Billion Women by 2020, Vandervelt Global Investments, and Ingrid Vandervelt LLC. From 2011 to 2014, she was the entrepreneur in residence for Dell Inc., where she oversaw entrepreneurial initiatives worldwide, helping to build a $250 million business segment. During that time, she also founded the 125 million Dell Innovators Credit Fund, Dell's Founders Club, and the Dell Center for Entrepreneurs. IV sits on the UN Foundation's Global Entrepreneurs Council, is a managing partner of Bell Capital, and is co-founder of the Billionaire Girls Club. She created and co-hosted CNBC's original primetime series, American Made, which reached millions of viewers around the globe, around the globe and serves on the, she serves on the advisory boards of Springboard Enterprises, Current Motor, and is a Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network member. Mark Solon and Jenny Fielding are principals at Techstars. Mark previously co-founded and helped build Highway 12 Ventures, an early stage venture capital firm in the Mountain West region of the US. He's been investing in startups since the mid-90s when he was a partner in Atlantic Capital Group, a Boston-based private equity firm. He served on the board of directors of companies such as SendGrid, Sphero, and Perch, among others, and is the past chairman of the Rocky Mountain Venture Capital Association. Jenny leads both of Techstars Accelerators the Internet of Things, and FinTech in New York City. Prior to joining Techstars, Jenny headed up corporate venture and digital innovation at BBC Worldwide, where she made strategic investments and led business development deals. She's also started several companies, most notably Switch Mobile, a mobile VOIP company that was acquired in 2009. So with these impressive folks, and the many other talented and accomplished speakers who will appear before you, I have one final word of advice, and that is keep your eyes and ears open to new ideas, to new methods, to new partners and collaborators. I, and I wish you all the very best in your ventures and your adventures. Thank you.